Hey, everybody. Dr. Robin McKay here, and welcome to this week's weather report. It is Monday, May 2nd. I'm so happy to be here with you. If you are watching live, please say hello in the comments. If you are watching the recording, let me know. And if this is your first time meeting me, welcome. I am the founder of the Actualization Zone. I'm a uh, award-winning psychologist, an executive coach, a keynote speaker, and I love building bridges between your head and your heart, between science and spirit, and between reason and intuition. In fact, I spend a whole lot of my time supporting intuitive, intelligent people's career goals, their relationship goals, and so on. One of the things I know for sure is that we don't give, give ourselves enough time to tune into our intuition and certainly don't give our, our intuition enough credit. So in part, the work that I'm doing here on the weather report is to tune into the unconscious or the subtle energies that might be affecting us this week, things that I'm seeing in my community that are cropping up in private sessions as well. And um, so I want to share some of that with you today. And I do that through just tuning in and I sometimes use some images from cards that I have in order to kind of support the process. But this week is all about inner child stuff. This isn't something that we talk about a whole lot as professionals, as adult humans, we kind of set aside the things of childhood and start moving in the direction of our goals and dreams and accomplishments and doing all the things and raising the kids and having the relationships and all those things that our adult selves came here to do. And yet what I have found over the course of the last 22 years that I've been doing this work personally and also professionally, that that part of your consciousness that houses your inner child, all of those memories that you have from childhood, those experiences that you have, there is a part of your consciousness that still I like to think about as the inner child. And that's the part that we're going to talk about today. So early in this week, one of the things that I want us to think about is in what way am I dimming my light? In what way am I dimming my light? And I want you to think about when you were a kid, Think about getting an award or recognition, winning something, getting spotlighted in some way, just for being you. Maybe recognized for winning a spelling bee or a math, math facts test or something like that when you were in third grade, something like that. I want you to think about that because often it's the repercussions of these early events in our lives that teach us unconsciously and sometimes consciously how we need to show up in the world so that other people feel comfortable, so that we don't get bullied, so that we continue to have a sense of belonging in our, in our community, especially in childhood. There's nothing more important for most kids than having friends, than fitting in. And when you are both intuitive and intelligent, chances are you probably stood out in some way. I remember when I was a kid, I was taller than everybody else. And I also got good grades and I was a good artist. So there were a lot of opportunities for me to be recognized for that. Some people didn't like me because of the recognition that I got. And I think that on some level I was okay with that, but I also learned pretty young that if I wanted to have friends, if I wanted to fit in, I should probably just turn my light down a little bit. So if you're not conscious and aware of that happening in your childhood, you're not going to necessarily know how that's going to influence or affect how you show up in your career, or if you're a business owner, how you show up in your business. So this week, think about it. How am I dimming my light? Where am I shrinking back rather than leaning in to my contributions, to my creativity, to my leadership? And you can probably, if you are mindful about it, trace that back to a couple of salient experiences when you were a kid. And I'm going to talk with you about what to do about that. But I think it's the first thing to pay attention to is where am I dimming my light? And what are the memories that I have around playing small, dimming my light when I was a little kid? All right. So that's the first piece. How am I dimming my light in order to fit in? The second piece this piece for this week is reassurance. The reason that 
I want us to be focusing on where are you dimming your light is because when you stop dimming your light, when you start standing in the truth of who you are as a leader, as somebody who can kind of see around corners and predict what's going to happen in the future in your field, generate great ideas. Maybe you're an inventor, maybe you're an innovator, but when you start really shining your light, the other people who you're meant to work with, who really truly understand you and who don't need a whole lot of explanation about whatever your vision is or whatever your idea is, they're going to start gathering around you. So your light is actually going to draw others to you who are like-minded or my tongue in cheek, light-minded, like-minded individuals who are going to support, who are going to celebrate, who are going to help you move the needle, advance the vision, and bring that into fruition. But that's all dependent on whether or not or how much of your light you're actually allowing yourself to transmit. If you're only allowing yourself to transmit a little bit of light, if you're playing small, if you're worried about having the tall poppy syndrome, where if I stand out, I might get my head chopped off, which happens, it's cross-culturally and around the world that happens. But um, when you make a decision that you're going to do so anyway, even if it makes other people feel uncomfortable, even if somebody doesn't like you because you're shining your light, even if you're going to continue to do it because you know you can do more good with your light shining in the world than it does if you're dimming your light. All right. When you do that, the resources, the people, the opportunities, the jobs, if you're looking for a new position, all of those things are going to be illuminated from your light, from who you are being. Isn't that cool? So think about that. Shine my light and the light shines as a beacon for those who you're meant to be working with, who you're meant to be a part of. It's very exciting. The third thing about the inner child is this, the inner child loves to play. Now, we also, generally speaking, as intelligent, intuitive people, figured out early on that the way that you can get around a lot of the social nonsense that happens in elementary school, even middle school, and certainly high school as well, is to take your work very seriously. So we set aside the things of childhood pretty young, actually, compared to people who maybe are less intuitive or not quite as intelligent as the people who are in my circles. And um, so as a result, we, we get a sense of you take things seriously. We take things so seriously. My work is serious. My life is serious. And we kind of have a furrowed brow and concentrate and we focus. That's what's been rewarded in the past. Well, when we're working on healing the inner child, when we're working on just untethering the inner child from all of those past traumas and past challenges that you've had, play is the way to go about doing that. The most playful ones are the ones who have the frequency of joy, of gratitude, of celebration. And as it turns out, what positive psychology teaches us through the research is that the better you feel, the more successful you are. So it's no longer the drudgery, the hard work, the furrowed brow, the concentration, the focus. Those are always going to be part of the game. But the new game is play. So if you have little kids in your life, get down on the floor with them and play. If you don't have little kids in your life, or even if you do, have a dance party. Wear a pretty flowy skirt and spin around in circles. Buy some balloons and skip in the park with your balloons. Go fly a kite. Do something fun. Be playful this week. Be playful. It's in the spirit of play. It's in the spirit of joyful celebration that our perspective shifts. And when perspective shifts, we can see different opportunities. We can see different solutions than we can if our brows are always furrowed. We're always focused, serious. That's one frequency. We don't want to get you on another bandwidth. And that bandwidth is a bandwidth of joy, elation, zest for life. Because even if things are serious in the world, which there are a lot of things that are going on in the world that are serious. That doesn't mean that you don't take those things seriously, but here's what I know for sure, that you will be an even greater contribution to the solutions 
when you, your mood and emotions are elevated. The best way to do that, play, play, have some fun. The overriding theme for this week is also around rest and restoration. So you may have been putting the pedal to the metal at work. You may have been overdoing in your life, having so many things to do, check all off all the boxes on your list. And there's more boxes being added every moment, right? It's okay. It's kind of the way of it. But rest is an essential part of being human. It's one of those things that we override a lot, especially if you um, aren't particularly neurotic, you don't have a lot of anxiety, you're not particularly sensitive to stress. Chances are you're going to be more than capable of overworking. So resting is actually a choice and it's a good choice for you because again, it allows everything to settle. First of all, it allows your thoughts to settle. It allows you to become aware of some of those subtle energies yourself so that not only can you tune in and, and listen to this, this weather forecast every week, you can start tuning into your own intuitive ideas, your own intuitive knowings about what's coming down the pike this week. But you can do that so much better, infinitely better when you're rested. It's very hard for intuition to come through when you're busy, 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 and your brain is busy, and you're thinking, 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 and you're doing, 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 and you're wanting, wanting, wanting. When you're on that gerbil wheel, that's the last place that intuition can find you is on the gerbil wheel. So the invitation this week, come off the gerbil wheel, play, give yourself some opportunities to rest, to recover, to tune into your inner child. And one of my favorite practices to do when I'm tuning into my own inner child is just to envision myself at my best. And I always think about myself at like four years old at my family's cabin. It was very rustic, no running water or anything, but we would go out to my family's cabin in the summertime and play and fish and hike. And I would spend a lot of time laying on my tummy in a bed of clover for, and I could find four leaf clovers in that little bed of clover. And I just think about myself then. That was probably such a poignant memory for me. It's something that I, I refer back to again and again when I think about myself as a little kid, just being her natural self, just being her natural self. So if you can call up a memory of yourself, just feeling your best, feeling like yourself, even though you're only four or five years old. And in your imagination, invite her now as your adult self to play. What are you doing? You can ask. This is all taking place in your imagination, but it's within the imagination that you actually restore the relationship with your, your child self. And it's also where you heal the inner child. Because not all of childhood is rainbows and sunshine, is it? There's a lot of stuff that comes up in childhood that, as I said, continues to impact us even as adults. So I believe it's our responsibility to learn how to parent ourselves in a different way than we were parented by our parents. They did the best that they could. If they could have done anything else differently, they would have. But as adults, we can go back into those memories. We can rewrite those scripts. We can re-understand those, those experiences in different ways, ways that liberate your consciousness, ways that liberate your emotions so that you have full access to your emotions, to your consciousness as you're making your contributions, as you're mastering the gifts that you've been given to master during your life. So if you're game for that, I will be I will be very interested and curious to see how that shows up for you this week. How are you going to tune into your inner child? How are you going to do a little bit of R&R? &R? Give yourself some rest so you can tune into your heart, to your playful side. And then I will be even more interested to see the outcomes of that. What's different in your life as a result of taking this time, taking this week to play, to engage life in a new way 
to get the furrow out of your brow and put a smile on your face. And look yourself in the mirror, eye to eye and heart to heart. Say, I see you in there. I see you. Let's go play and see what happens. All right. That's the weather report for this week. If you found this valuable, I'd love to hear from you in the comments. If you are not a member of the Actualization Zone on Facebook yet, we will drop a link to membership in the comments. It's free and it's for intuitive, intelligent leaders who are ready to create a new world for themselves and for other people as well. I'm Dr. Robin McKay. It's been my joy to be here with you. Big love from my inner child to you.